You know, Pete, over the years, uh, when rigging heavy wood, I've often wondered what kind of force I was actually subjecting my ropes to, my hardware to, what kind of damage I might be doing to them, and how long I can expect them to last. No one really knows, Ken. It hasn't been measured for the way arborists use ropes. And I've been thinking about an experiment we can do to actually measure these things. But we're going to try and pick a worst case scenario. We're going to take a straight vertical stem. We're going to cut a piece off the top and catch it under an arborist rigging block. Um, there are times when you have to hold a piece above the ground, and we're going to choose to snub this one off. We'll make measurements of the force at the arborist block and the force in the rigging line itself. Worst case scenario is really what we need to be thinking of when we're choosing equipment, when we're choosing whether it's hardware or ropes, because I know I've been in trees a number of times when uh, our, my rope person failed to let the rope run to decelerate the piece, and I experienced in the tree a, a significant shock load, not to mention what the rope and the hardware experienced. Doing a worst case scenario allows us to understand what are the worst things you can do to your rope in any other rigging situation you may do, like swinging pieces won't be as bad as this. And then through experience, practice, we can learn to decelerate and minimize shock loading. That's always the best choice. Peter, why don't we start by looking at some of the equipment that we're going to be working with. We've used a few specialized things here, Ken. At the base of the tree, we're using a friction device called the Porter Wrap, which we can use to either lower pieces of wood, or in this case, to tie them off to snub them. What we've also attached here is a, an electronic dynamometer to measure the forces that the rope sees in the rigging situation. And here we have a splice die rigging sling, which we can tie around the base of the tree. OK, so here in this case, this is going to give us the force that the rope experiences. Now, to measure the force in the rigging point, we have a rigging block. We have a dynamometer in between the rigging block and the rigging sling in the tree. We have a remote device that will give us the reading while we're down here on the ground. What we know is that there will be a different force experienced by the rigging point than the actual rigging line. That's right. We'd expect for this worst case scenario that the force at the top would be double the force at the bottom. The first experiments we did, we found it was a little bit more than double. And what we surmised is we were measuring the friction in the arborist block. So for these experiments, we're using a new block. And before performing the experiments, we actually, actually measured its friction. So we can calculate that later after our experiment. And that was very interesting, because we've learned that the friction at the, at the rigging point will, will have something to do with the force experienced in the system. That's right. The short end of the rope between the block and the piece of wood that we're going to lower out of the tree will be greater than the force between the block and the porter wrap at the base of the tree. OK, I know what a stickler you are about good science. And that's a good thing, because we want accurate results, and we want to, we want to understand these things in an accurate way. You're going to be recording many different aspects of the experiment, from knot placement and movement to how much rope we have out, and all the different aspects of the component.